every Tuesday, we, excuse me, every Monday, good Lord, this weekend was nice and, and, and long. Um, if you come over here to TFNN.com, you can go to the newsletters tab here, and you look over here in the top right, the Mastering Probability Newsletter by Steve Rhodes. Every Monday, we have Steve Rhodes on the show. Of course, he has his own show, The Trader's Edge, on at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, right here on Tiger Financial News Network. Steve, how are you doing? Hey, Jacob. Hi. Good. How are you doing? Good, good, good. So are you a, a fan of either the Dodgers or the Yankees? Or, or do you don't or you just don't like both teams? You know, I am I honestly watch more UFC than anything else. Um, <laughs> which is always a shame I know in conversations, but please enlighten me on what's going on. Of course I gotta well, rep the race. Too. Tonight is tonight is game three uh, in New York. Uh, the uh, Yankees are down uh, uh, two games. The uh, game first game which I saw um, uh, after, after some wedding events, uh, uh, when uh, Free, uh, Freddie Freeman, I think is his name, hit the Grand Slam home run, that was pretty cool just to see, regardless of who you were a fan of. But when we were checking out of our hotel yesterday, uh, the uh, uh, Dodgers were, are staying there. So they were coming in and oh, nice. we were going out. Now, they had just played a game the night before. I'm not sure exactly what time it finished, probably close to the midnight time frame or 11, 11, between 11 and 12. Drove out to the airport, had to get on a red eye, obviously their own, you know, chartered plane or what have you, you know, and then get in. So, um, uh, so myself, I I am a a, um, a sports fanatic, so to speak, and I don't really have, um, I don't really, uh, uh, you know, whether it's the Yankees or the Dodgers that win won't really matter to me too much but what i would like to see is a game seven so i'm pulling totally. for the yankees tonight and um I, I don't know i assume they play either tomorrow there's their fourth game or, or the next evening but what was interesting we were sitting uh uh we were sitting at a, a dim sum restaurant pretty famous dim sum oh, yeah. restaurant down in chinatown yesterday and uh and uh, it was a, a quite a large group of us. So I went online to my Ticketmaster account because I said, you know, maybe I'll stay and, and catch the game. And I went on to Ticketmaster and it came back with no tickets available, <laughs> which I've never seen in my entire life for yeah. any sporting event. And then somebody else found some other app and they were able to pull up uh, tickets, uh, certainly much more aftermarket type tickets and just as expensive as can be. So I can I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it from my cave, uh, so to speak, out there, and just hoping for for a great uh, game. So uh, um, I don't watch. Uh, you, it's what is it? U, UFC? UEC? What is it? Say? Yeah, the, the UFC. So you know, like UFC. in my spare time, I also do you know boxing and jujitsu, and that kind of is like for whatever reason that is the sport that has always spoken to me. And so watching the UFC, um, you know, what what boxing was to the past generations is absolutely what the UFC is to this generation. Okay, well, you won't you won't see that in the baseball game, but I did see it yesterday <laughs> in the uh, in the Cowboys game. Things seem to get oh, a little sure. off hand there. That, that makes sense. Point in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, this morning when I was doing the uh, Trader's Edge show, uh, there was a question that was asked about the uh, uh, presidential cycles and so forth. So yeah. what I had said during the show or during my, that show, I said, let me try to get, pull together some charts uh, for uh, for this segment here. So I was able to do that. So we're going to talk about the four-year presidential election cycle and the impacts on the uh, stock market, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Yeah, um, we're coming up pretty close to this election. So it's interesting yeah. to see what's going to happen yeah. here. Absolutely. So here is the, and we're going to take a look at the Dow. And the reason we're taking a look at the Dow is because for the Dow, I've got 127 years worth of data. This is data provided by the folks over at Seasonex. They have great seasonal tools out there, covers most instruments, commodities, and so forth. Uh, and here, what we're just simply taking a look at just the normal presidential cycle. Uh, the first one that obviously I can put, because we go back in this case here to 1897 is the uh, 1900. Uh, obviously, that's not the first presidential election. Uh, election, but it's the data that we've got. So we can take a look at the Dow and go back that far. And on average here, we take a look at just presidential cycles, regardless of who it is that wins or what happens in the presidential cycle year. That's where we're in right now. Major bottoms typically form between the end of May or the end of June. So let's think end of May, end of June. If we take a look at the actual stock charts, and we're going to go take a look at the center chart out here for the Dow, this is the weekly time frame. We had the this year, we've seen major bottoms, I would say April 19th. May 31st and August 9th. So we've got that May uh, time frame in essence covered here. And uh, the daily and weekly charts, they've got tops 
uh, it, uh, that are present out here, and we'll we'll try to talk about those as well. But the monthly time frame chart, as you can see, I've got a drawn in A to B equal CD pattern to the upside that would take us towards the 47,399 level. Now I do believe over time we're going to get up there. The reason is because in the month of uh, September, uh, what the Dow did was it negated its uh, TD9 count top, and it did that in one month, and that typically talks about a very strong upward momentum move that's in place out there. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is if we take a look at the post-electional, post-election seasonal cycle. Um, so this says, you know, what we're going to basically see in 2025 out here, if we're looking at that, uh, this typically shows us that uh, uh, that the uh, uh, major bottoms form in the late February time frame. So that says it was coming to 2025. What we'd be looking for if the market would follow this pattern is a major bottom at form in the February time frame. And that typically would lead to a rally that lasts through early August, declines into mid-November, and that's when the Santa Claus rally would form that would take us higher into the end of the year. So this is what we typically see on average, doesn't matter who won, whether it's a Democrat or it's a Republican, and this would be the first year of that new uh, election cycle out here. If we take a look at the, the Dow first year of a Democratic presidential cycle out here, um, so I just went ahead and separated everything, what this shows that major bottoms form in late February. Kind of similar to what we just looked at here. But in this case here, as you take a look at this chart, this just suggests that the market rallies for the entire year. So this would be for uh, 2025. Now there's only nine actual touch points that I can use here. I did not include second terms out there. Okay. Just the first term of an election uh, year out there, if it was a, a second term of a Democrat or Republican, I just simply went ahead and excluded that out there. Right. Um, for you know, for 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 this, because that kind of represents a little bit of what we're looking at right now, out here, um, and uh, rallies. Uh, uh, so this is nine years worth of nine nine cycles that we have out here. If we take a look at the first year of Republican presidential cycle, um, and this includes 1929, this is what the pattern looks like. Does not look anywhere near as good as what we we're looking at previously. Again, here's the previous cycle. If you're a bull, that's what you'd like to see. But this does include 1929. If I go ahead and exclude 1929, and somebody might say, well, what about 2020? Wasn't that something to exclude? No, because 2020, we actually closed higher than we did in 2019 versus in 1929, we had a three or four year decline, I believe. Uh, so I don't consider that to be the same. So if we take a look at the uh, exclude 1929, this is what the pattern would look like. It's still not as promising as that first year of a, a Democratic a president out there. Um, in this case here, this shows that typically we see a bottom in uh, late January or February that moves up into the sell in May type cycle. Usually it's late May. And then we get a move down into the uh, late September time frame before that seasonal cycle uh, kicks in. That Santa Claus rally seasonal cycle is really what I should say. I will say this before we go to a break here. The Dow is trading at a new all-time high today priced in yen. That's the very upper right-hand screen out here. It's really important to understand how the Dow or any uh, product trades in all major currencies out there uh, because in this case here, what we have really going on, you can see prior all-time highs from about four, five, six uh, days ago out there. When a instrument is rallying in all major currencies that's a real bull market. We come back, uh, let's take a look at the rest of the trades. Yeah, fantastic. Steve, stay right there, folks. Stay right there. We'll be right back with Steve Rhodes. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup. You're watching The Tom O'Brien Show. We are joined right now by Steve Rhodes. Steve Rhodes is the author of the Mastering Probability newsletter. I really want to recommend you guys checking this out. What is fantastic is this goes for all our newsletters, but you gotta check out Mastering Probability. We have a 30 day money back guarantee if for whatever reason the newsletter doesn't work out for you, but we're betting that it will. Steve also hosts the Trader's Edge at 11 a.m. Eastern time right here on Tiger Financial News Network. See, before we went to the break, we were talking about the Dow Jones making all time highs in the yen. Kind of uh, think about what your, uh, you know, what that means for us over here and what else you're looking at today. Yeah, so typically when the Dow makes a top or major top out there, it'll top out in all the currencies at the same time. Okay. And so the mere fact that the yen made a new all-time high today um, is, is suggesting that we don't have major top yet. Not sure that we're going to have major top, but what I thought we would do is move from the presidential cycle patterns out there and just take a look at yearly. What are the yearly patterns? And one of the tools that I've got helps us to identify consecutive years to the upside and consecutive years to the 
downside. In this case here on this chart, the black digits are consecutive years to the upside and the red digits are consecutive years to the downside. So for example, as I had mentioned, I've got data that goes back into the 18, late 1800s out here. This shows us really from 1928 forward. And from 1928 forward, so we, when I mentioned the uh, crash of 1929 and I took that out of one of the, the presidential uh, cycle pattern out there just to maybe even things out. That did lead to a four-year decline out there, which then led to a four-year rally. Um, so again, we're taking a look at just consecutive moves higher and lower. What else can we learn out here? Well, these rectangles that we have, blue rectangles, are showing uh, the consecutive moves to the upside and the red uh, or the uh, black rectangles consecutive moves to the downside. Those folks that have listened to the show know that sometimes we take a look at this for a daily time frame, a weekly time frame, as we're trying to understand when an instrument uh, bottoms or tops out there. And it's very common that knee-jerk reactions to the upside or the downside are between two to four bars out there. And we can see here, you can see each of these are either two, three, or four bar moves out there. Uh, this has taken us from 1930, the 1928 time period up to 1977. What's taken place since 1977? Again, the blue uh, rectangles here show us consecutive moves higher and consecutive moves lower. If we take a look at consecutive moves lower, uh, since that time frame, we just have one, two, and one three bar move. Most uh, moves lower end up being uh, just one bar, one year to the downside before things move to the upside. Now, as we move to the 1970 time frame, again, most of the years, the upside, you can see a number of two bars, the upside, but then we started getting a five bar move, a nine bar move. Now, that nine bar move was the move that took us into the 2000 top. Now, that 2000 top, pretty significant. That led to a three bar move to the downside or a three year move to the downside. As I mentioned in uh, 2020, we actually finished higher out here than in 2019. Yes, we had that big move to the downside, the COVID spike to the downside, the COVID crash to the downside, but it was nowhere near a 1929 event, which was the reason why I didn't take 2020 out of the picture when we were taking, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 2020 out of the picture I when I was doing that. Um, if we look at, uh, if I go ahead and scrunch, well, I didn't. I didn't scrunch everything. Oh shoot! Sorry about that. Let me see. I did <laughs> a chart here that scrunched everything together. I believe. Yeah. Let me see. No, it didn't. Son of a gun! I guess that chart didn't post in here. But uh, what I would, what I would suggest for you is that first we are in year two of a rally. So if we come back here, take a look, we come back in the 70s, we saw that most of those rallies ended after the second year, and then they went ahead and moved lower. In those instances, we had one two-bar move to the downside. Most of them were just really a one-year move to the downside out there. So that's something for us to consider as we come into this two-year rally, uh, because that could lead to a one- to three-year decline. And the question would be, well, Steve, okay, you say that, but how are we going to know? You know, my study, uh, Jacob, of uh, chart patterns out there, it doesn't really matter what's going on in yeah. the uh, world, whether it's wars, whatever it might be, that these patterns that I use, that I teach to subscribers, are working all the time out there. Yeah. So we're going to use the patterns that help us to identify or signal tops and bottoms. We're going to use, which which basically those are, for my uh, subscribers and my, my uh, trading, they're for their TD9 counts, their Rhodes Mintum Indicator patterns, their wave number seven, a, a portion of the uh, Ch Chapman wave out there, and then the A to B equals CD patterns. And here again on the Dow, on a monthly time frame, this is suggesting that over time, not tomorrow, not next week, but over time we should get up to the 47, uh, 400 area. That's its A to B equals CD pattern to the upside out there. To identify support and resistance, we're going to use profile levels. We're going to use TD9 count breakout and breakdown levels. For example, if you take a look at the uh, Dow Equity Future contract, that formed a TD9 count top. Uh, half a dozen days ago or so, and that took price right back to where it had broken out from. And that's at 42,254. Now, when you pull back to a breakout level, even though we might not see what I would say a pattern per se, but when you pull back to a breakout level, that in fact can be a buying opportunity. And so we can see that maybe people on Friday, when they saw the Dow moving lower, this is a Dow equity future contract, by the way, that we're taking a look at out here, that they were getting, that the market was just getting ready to move lower out there. And it found support at a TD9 count breakout. So that's a pattern that everybody should really uh, 
use and learn. I would expect or anticipate that we're going to have at least a two two day rally. It may be a two to four day rally. So we're just going to simply have to monitor this one day at a time out there. And that's what we're going to use to help us identify as we go into 2025 out there, we're going to be aware of the election cycles and patterns that typically form there. And we'll see the patterns unfold at that same time. So that's how we'll know what 2025 is going to look like. Steve, fantastic. Such unique and thorough analysis every time. That's why I love coming on here on Mondays and kind of hearing that stuff, right? I mean, take all these large data sets, collate it into something that we can kind of understand here and then develop some kind of actionable plan for it. Steve, thank you so much again. Are you looking at Palantir yeah. too, huh? Well, I was going to go ahead and give you a little dessert. I would before, like to, before yes. Before we sign up, okay? <laughs> so if we take a look at Palantir, if you're looking at the monthly time frame chart out here, this formed a TD9 count top back in August of 2024. It took that out immediately the wow. following month. When you take out a TD9 count immediately, it tells you about a strong upward momentum move. Now, this was already in a strong upward momentum move, but this is suggesting that that should continue. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, uh, this negated its TD9 count top. It did it in two months' time. It did it uh, on a weekly basis last week. So last week, negated that signal says we're going to move higher, trade above resistance levels. And we look at the daily time frame. The daily time frame on Friday negated its roads momentum indicator top and TD9 count pattern. And what those patterns do is they simply, when you get those tops, all that it really suggests is a move back to support. Well, if we take a look at Palantir on a daily basis, it moved back to 4102. That level held the support. Now we're trading above profile resistance and its TD9 count top. Even the daily suggests that we move higher. This suggests that maybe we get a short-term top between Wednesday and Friday. When are they coming out with earnings? Was it tomorrow or the... Uh, uh, next Wednesday? Monday, November 4th. Oh, next Monday. So it could be in time when they come out next Monday for a short-term top. But we'll have to come back and look at it. So I just wanted to give you a little dessert for your favorite stuff. Thank you so much for that, Steve. You know I love talking about Palantir. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. All right, Steve? You, you bet. Take care. Thanks. Take care. Folks, stay right there. I'll be right back.